Hey everyone, it's Felicia here and welcome back to my educational series. So if you are new here, I'm a medical mom and my sweet daughter was born with a rare syndrome called Pfeiffer syndrome, which requires her to have a trach which she breathes out of, a G-tube, sex machines, a lot of different things. She's a complex kiddo that is thriving and that me and her dad and her little brother love so much. I get so many questions in my comments about all the things that she has, whether it be her trach, whether it be how she eats, and I answer them here. Again, I am not a medical professional. This is just a mom sharing what she's learned through her journey of being a mom and caring for her daughter as well as you know I've been trained through the hospital on how to care for her and we have wonderful nurses who I also learn from. So if you are here to just learn and want to be a compassionate human being and be able to understand other kids who might have medical needs then you are in the right place. But if you were here to learn for like a report or something that's like formal and professional don't this is not for you okay <laughs> so disclaimer okay so today we're going to talk about g2 and i will leave all the descriptions down here but i always get questions about how does callie eat will she ever eat all of her food by mouth will she always have to use her g2 like how does she get all of her food down and so the g2 is the answer so with Pfeiffer syndrome, this video right here, what about Pfeiffer syndrome? Um, Callie has really narrow airways. So I talked about before how she breathes through her trach and how we're trying to do the steps to get her trach out video here. Today we're talking about how she consumes her food. So if you think about it, if her airway is so narrow that air, it's really hard for air to pass through, then imagine food. So because of that, from a very young age about, well actually right when she was born, she received all of her food through an NG tube. Okay, so that's like a little tiny tubing that goes through her nose and into her stomach. And we had to manually place it. We placed it, the doctors and the nurses did. They placed it through her nose. They would tape it along her face so it would be out of her way and she would grab at it and then it would go into her stomach. And so I was pumping milk and we would attach that small NG tube to a feed bag and sometimes to a syringe, I would hold it up and gravity would allow milk to just flow into her stomach. Over time, there would be a pump that would pump milk into her stomach via the NG tube. We asked the doctors, how long will a kid need to be on an NG tube? So an NG tube is a very short term solution to someone who has feeding issues or complications with eating via mouth. So she had the NG tube for about three months. And as you can imagine, as my girl was able to move, them hands would try to snatch that NG tube out. So we are placing it multiple times. Um, it also is just not comfortable and it would get maybe saliva or drool on the taping and we would have to replace it. So we replaced it every, every couple of days, I would say. And at the age of three months, it was time to place her G-tube. So with the G-tube, that is a tube that connects right into that abdominal wall, right into your stomach. And that's what she's had since she's been three months and she'll be four years old in January, okay? So that just shows you, this is more of a long-term solution for kids and adults who have uh, feeding complications. So as Callie has gotten older, we have been able to give her more food and milk and whatever it might be by mouth. But that was something that she had to learn how to do. Right now, she is eating by mouth, very minimal, which is exciting. But her surgery, her monoblock surgery, allowed us to be able to get more space so she can actually take food in and swallow. So just like with her breathing, a lot of these skills that we learn, we learn as a baby, we're in the suck, we're in the swallow, we learn to breathe early on. And so you can imagine when you don't get those natural skills as a baby and you have to teach yourself that as you get older, it's really hard to do. So she's always been fed continuously. So there's different types of feeding schedules for her, whether it be like a bolus, so we give her a small amount every few hours, or there's been times where we had a feeding bag connected and she was continuously getting food very small amounts. So you might be wondering, how do you know how much to give her? Well, we have nutritionists that we work with that share with us, you know, the amount of food that a stomach can hold. So as you get older, your stomach gets larger and your stomach can hold more food. So we're working with nutritionists with say that she can have eight ounces every few hours. So then that's what we would do. And we will also be measuring her and making sure she's gaining weight. If she's not gaining weight at the proper rate, 
then maybe we're underfeeding her. And so we really leaned on doctors to help us understand how much food that she could take in. She also gets her medicine via her G-tube. So when she's sick or the different things that she has to take, all inserted via G-tube. So one thing that has been a downfall of the G-tube is that she doesn't always have these hunger pains, you know? So for us, we get hungry, we know there's a signal in our body saying our stomach is empty. I need to go feed myself. Well, we're doing that for her. We're almost getting in front of it. So right now she has a snack every two hours and then she has a lunch that she gets and she has dinner and she gets a little bit of food at night. So we're trying to stay in front of that so she doesn't get hungry. And by doing that, it takes away of her body being able to signal for her, her of hunger. So now that we're trying to feed her via mouth, there is not that interest in eating because she's full. And so there is this dilemma that we have to go through of, do we give her a little bit less food so she, she signals that she's hungry and then we can feed her and maybe there'll be more of an interest in it? We shall see. But what we've noticed for her is that her desire to eat has really increased because of being in school. So school has been a blessing because she's seen her peers eat. She's seen that they're eating food by mouth and we're also trying to eat in front of her more often. So it's starting to click of this is what one does to eat. Cause for so long she has used a syringe to push food into her stomach. And she's really aware of that. You know, if we tell her it's time to eat and we'll use the mouth signal, even though if we're gonna put food through her G tube and she'll come and she'll sit down and we can use a syringe. So we feed her in the morning at nine, at 11, and then at one, she has a big lunch. So the nine, 11 feet are 75 mLs. And so we use that syringe to push the food slowly into her stomach. And then at 1 p.m., she has a longer amount of time that she eats from one to 3.25. And that is in a feeding bag and she wears a backpack. And so when you see her with that backpack walk, walking around, that's her food. And some might say, Can, is that okay for her to eat and we're moving around? Well, it's going into her stomach at a very slow rate. So it's been fine and she's showing us that her body can tolerate that. But that is how she eats her longer feeds. Is it connected to her in a backpack? Because what we found is no one wants to sit down in the chair for two and a half hours to eat. So that is kind of where we are right now. We have a feeding therapist that supports us to help Callie eat by mouth. We try different foods and flavors and we've been doing that since she was, I don't know, about six months old of putting different flavors on her tongue. So those taste buds are, are really triggering and moving her mouth around, but she really couldn't swallow until she had her monoblock surgery. And so always for us, her issue is aspiration. So her aspirating and because she doesn't have the clearest pathway, will that get into her lungs? And so we had to think about that for her when it comes to eating um, solids and thicker food. So right now, all her foods are pureed. They're like baby baby food in a sense. And that's what she needs because she doesn't have the ability to chew or understand what it's like to chew food and then swallow. Right now she's really conquered swallowing and we can give her a small bowl, maybe an ounce of food or so, and she will eat all of that. And that is exciting, <laughs> really exciting for us. So again, how do you, what kind of food do you make for her? So we work for the nutritionists and we think about what food do you guys eat? What food would we wanna have her take in? Because she's got some other things going on, one of the things called EOE, there's certain foods that trigger her and have really slow motility, which is really common when kids don't eat by mouth, is that their body doesn't signal to them that there's food and it's time to break it down. So to kind of explain to you how that works, when we get hungry, we go eat. We get our food, we put it in our mouth. When the food touches our tongue and the saliva, everything starts going, we start chewing our food, our body is signaling to us, food is coming down. It is time to start breaking that food down. So by the time it gets to your stomach, it's ready to break it down and move it through your GI system. Kylie doesn't have it. She doesn't have that signal, I'm hungry. All of a sudden, food's in her stomach. And now her body's trying to work in overtime, break it, break it down. And so her food just digests a lot slower than ours. And so because of that, 
we've had to watch what kind of food she has. It can be very fibrous foods. And so we are looking through what a healthy diet would be for her. And we have, uh, we use Cake Farms, which is a already, it's a peptide. So it's already broken down a liquid form and has all the nutrients that she needs. And we add other things to it, whether it be bananas or avocados, we've started to create butternut squash and, and other types of foods for her to eat by mouth, a berry blend. Her father is amazing and creates different concoctions of um, juices and, and whether it be celery and ginger and things that come together that help her reduce mucus that help her when she's sick, that have a, a high vitamin C or vitamin D boost to it. And so those things are all the things we think about when it comes to her feeding schedule. And so I will say her diet is more complex than other kids because she doesn't get a chance to eat uh, snacks like goldfish and um, anything else like that. You know, she's getting raw, natural foods and we are really thinking and being conscious of how her body is going to react to it. So just like in the other video, I talked about how we get to the steps of having her um, consume more food or understand how food works for her and maybe start to up her food and try different types. There is a process to really starting to understand what she's consuming. So once she starts to eat, two to three times a day, I believe it's about an ounce or like 30 mLs of food. Then we'll do a test where we will watch her eat and we will see how it goes through her stomach and how it digests and see that she's actually swallowing, consuming that food. And that is something we'll go to the hospital for, to test her for, to really understand where she is and when she's way to start like trying new foods and maybe chewing. It has to be like soft food if we're gonna try it, but we're really just starting back over as if she's, you know, nine months. And what's been exciting is that her little brother is trying food right now, you know, baby food, and she sees him and she wants to do what he's doing. So it's been a blessing to have the two of them kind of be on this path together and he's helping his big sis to understand how, how food works and how we consume food. And now she's excited to, if I say, uh, Cal, you, you want some food? Ah, she'll come over, open her mouth, try it, swallow, and we're not seeing it all over her bib or anything. So that's been a really big blessing for us. And so I, I feel like the trajectory and as she is starting to do well with her breathing and wearing her PMV, again, watch this video, is helping her also swallow and eat. So as she gets more comfortable with that pathway and learning how to move her tongue and how to engage her mouth and how to move and swallow food through her, her you know, through her uh, esophagus, then that also is key for her breathing. And so they work well together. And that's what we have noticed. And that has been exciting because we know that she's doing a lot better with her breathing through her nose and her mouth. And so I do believe that I've seen an increase in the food that she's been able to eat by mouth, definitely since she's been going to school. So we're excited. So yes, for all those, I hope you learned in this video, you know, how one with a, a G tube eats, how Callie consumes her food, what kind of food that she eats, and the different types of way that she is being fed, whether it be a bolus through her syringe or through her actual feeding pump, which pumps food into her stomach. Oh, I didn't talk about much about that. So feeding pump. So we get to select the rate and the amount. So if we want her to have, um, and I'm using mLs because we, that's how we do it. We don't talk in ounces. So 30 mLs equals one ounce. So if she was to have eight ounces of food, we get to say that we want her to have it to her in an hour within or 30 minutes and we select the time and the rate. And how we get to that is really seeing what, how her body reacts. So if we're going to select a rate that's too fast for her, we're gonna see her have some stomach pains, maybe throw up, maybe wanna sit down. So we can play with the rate based off of her body, but also we can talk to a specialist which she has, which she has a, a GI doctor, as well as nutritionists that really support us in knowing what rate is gonna fit Callie. But at the end of the day, her body definitely talks to us and tells us what she's ready for. And so we're actually in a, a stage right now, we're gonna change a little bit of her feeding schedule to get her more food throughout the day because that girl is busy and she's moving and she's burning calories. And we, we wanna help her grow a little bit more. And so we're gonna start to up that nutrients and that calorie intake for her. So 
the feeding pump. Yes, that was one thing I wanted to make sure I covered because I get questions about that as well. All right, so I hope you learned a little bit today about a G-tube. There are a lot of different G-tubes, I will say. So I only talked about the NG tube, which is the tube through your nose and the G-tube, which Callie has your stomach, but there's different um, tubes that go in different places in your stomach, or I should say in, in different places in your GI tract. But those are the two that we covered today. So drop a comment below, ask me more questions, and I'll be back to answer them.